Hello everybody, today we get to talk about the latest entry in the seemingly never-ending Marvel Cinematic Universe, Ant-Man. So way, way back in the day, a guy named Dr. Hank Pym became the original Ant-Man after discovering what he called the Pym Particle, which gave him his incredible shrinking powers. And for a while he was working with S.H.I.E.L.D. until they demanded he share with them the secrets of the Pym Particle, and he wasn't down with that because he figured they would just turn it into a weapon and it would eventually fall into the wrong hands. So he told him to get stuffed. Then we fast forward to the present day, and Pym is retired and living a quiet life in San Francisco. Which is where a lot of movies seem to be taking place nowadays. We got Inside Out, Terminator Genesis, parts of San Andreas, and now Ant-Man. It's a popular place. And the company Dr. Pym founded, which is now run by his former protege, Darren Cross, is very close to discovering the secrets of the Pym Particle all on their own. Dr. Pym is not at all happy about this because he fears what Cross might do with this technology, and so he tracks down a man by the name of Scott Lang. Lang is an ex-con who just got out of prison and is desperately trying to turn his life around, and Pym comes to him with an opportunity to become a hero. And Lang is on board. He says his days of breaking into places and stealing shit are over. And naturally, Dr. Pym tells him he needs him to break into a place and steal some shit. Of course. This is a pretty standard Marvel superhero movie, probably won't end up being one of the more memorable films in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it was still plenty enjoyable. It was very interesting that they decided not to do an origin story for the original Ant-Man, Dr. Hank Pym, and instead just jumped straight into the second Ant-Man, Scott Lang. We do get a few flashbacks here and there showing Hank Pym's past, but for the most part this is Scott's story. But the story does work well enough. The movie does have some pretty good humor, although I was a bit surprised that some of the jokes in the trailer are not in the theatrical cuts. Like the moment where Scott says, I am the Ant-Man. Yeah, I know, it wasn't my idea. That's not in the movie. Don't know why, but it's not. But there are still plenty of funny moments. There's one in particular that kind of sticks out in my memory. You know the moment in the trailer with the toy train? There's something that's kind of along similar lines, and it was just... Fantastic. I don't want to give it away, but very funny stuff. There are a few neat little Easter eggs in the movie. I did like when uh, Darren Cross is describing this shrinking technology that his company is developing and actually describes it using the words, Tales to Astonish. I see what you did there. As you might expect, this movie is pretty heavy on the special effects. For a story like this, it kind of has to be. And for the most part, they do work pretty well. There were a couple of moments here and there where they portrayed ants crawling on people and the ants were clearly CGI and it just didn't quite look right, but those were really the only moments I had a problem with. There's one moment in particular that really sticks out right at the beginning of the movie. It opens with a flashback scene back to when Hank Pym was still the Ant-Man and for this scene they had to de-age Michael Douglas and it is fucking sorcery. I don't know how they pulled it off, but it looks perfect. Absolutely perfect. And it is amazing how far we have come since the days of X-Men 3 when they tried to de-age Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen for that one flashback. And oh, it did not work. It Oh, that was horrifying. But in Ant-Man, they have perfected this ability. It was amazing. I really want to know how they did that. As far as the acting goes, I liked Paul Rudd as Scott Lang. I thought he did a pretty good job of portraying this guy who is definitely a good man, or at least trying to be, but just keeps ending up in some very bad situations, and it's very frustrating and hard not to feel bad for the guy. And likewise, very easy to feel happy for the guy when he finally does something right. Evangeline Lilly plays Hank Pym's daughter, Hope Van Dyne, and she was... Eh, Okay, nothing about her performance really stood out, nothing about the character really stood out, honestly, but she was adequate. Michael Pena plays Luis, who is basically the comedy sidekick for the movie, and does a decent enough job with the role. Corey Stoll did a pretty good job as Darren Cross, aka the Yellow Jacket, given what he had to work with, and I'll get to that in a second. We also got a quick cameo from John Slattery and Haley Atwell reprising their roles as Howard Stark and Peggy Carter. Anthony Mackie makes an appearance as Falcon so they can tie this movie in with the rest of the cinematic universe. Always good to see more of him. But the man who really steals the show is Michael Douglas. He was just absolutely brilliant in this movie. 
And after that performance, I certainly hope this is not the last we have seen of Hank Pym in the MCU. Everything he does in this movie, from trying to be a mentor to Scott, to his tumultuous relationship with his daughter, reliving the tragedy of what happened to his wife, it's all just so good. Unfortunately, this movie does have a weakness, and much like Guardians of the Galaxy, it's the villain. He's just not very well developed. We know he used to be Hank Pym's protege, but they had a falling out because... reasons. I mean, they kind of go into it, but they don't go into a whole lot of detail. And for very much of the movie, he doesn't really come across like a villain, per se. He's a little douchey, I suppose, but that's really it. And it's not really until the very end of the movie, when he finally becomes the Yellow Jacket, that he actually starts to feel like a villain. And the stakes really don't seem all that high for a superhero movie. We know Dr. Pym thinks Cross having access to the Pym Particle technology is bad, but they don't really go into a whole lot of detail about why that's bad. We know he wants to sell it, but no shit, he's a businessman, of course he wants to sell it. And yes, this could eventually lead to the technology falling into the wrong hands, and that would be bad, but the movie doesn't really make it feel like this is an important world-changing event or anything. And it's not until the very end of the movie that they just very casually mention, oh, by the way, the people buying it, they're Hydra. Oh! I get it now. Yes, that would be bad. You might have mentioned this before. But even so, in terms of the overall impact it would have, it seems like it's more along the lines of an episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. than an actual movie. In the end, it does have its flaws, but it was still a very fun movie and I enjoyed it quite a bit. And I'm looking forward to see what they do with these characters in the future. If you've enjoyed the Marvel Cinematic Universe so far, you will probably enjoy this one as well. Don't bother wasting your money on the 3D, because honestly, it doesn't really add anything to this movie, but otherwise, knock yourself out. And for those of you who have not seen it yet, yes, there is a mid credit scene, and yes, there is a post credit scene. So do not get up and leave when the credits start rolling. It still amazes me that people do this. Have you not figured it out yet? There's always something in the credits. God damn you people. And that's it for Ant-Man. Until next time, take care.